Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will discuss about the Ruby laser. Before starting the topic, please subscribe my channel as most of the viewers have not subscribed it. So let's start with the basic introduction of Ruby laser. Now, the Ruby laser was the first laser to be operated successfully. And a ruby crystal which is there in the ruby laser has high mechanical strength that is it is mechanically very strong and it has high thermal conductivity and very high quality crystals are grown on the ruby crystals. Now ruby laser is used at places where high part pulsed output is required and the basic thing uh, which a ruby laser has is that it is a three level laser. That is, it has three energy levels. One is the ground state level, the other one is excited state level and the one which lies at, uh, at the middle of these two levels is the metastable level. So it is basically a three level laser. Now we will see the principle and spectroscopy of ruby laser. Uh, the ruby laser consists of a single crystal of ruby whose ends are flat and one of which is completely silvered. So if we consider that this is a single crystal of ruby then its ends are flat and one of the end is completely silvered so that 100% reflectivity is possible whereas the other end is partially silvered so that we get a laser action. Now the ruby consists of aluminium oxide. The ruby crystal has Al2O3. This is the aluminium oxide which is there in the ruby, uh, ruby crystal and in which some of the aluminium ions are replaced by the atoms of chromium. Uh, the ruby consists of Al2O3 that is aluminium oxide and some of the aluminium ions are replaced by the atoms of chromium. So we replace some of the atoms of Al2O3 by chromium uh, atoms so that we get good lasing action. So in order to get good lasing action, about 0.05% of the atoms are that of chromium. So if we consider that there is a ruby crystal which consists of Al2O3 that is aluminium oxide, then in that ruby crystal 0.05% of the atoms will be that of chromium that is Cr3 positive ions so that a good lasing action is possible and we call it as pink ruby. Now here, here is the energy level of chromium ion in the aluminium oxide lattice. Here we have two pump bands, one is green band, the other one is blue band. Green band is actually centered at 0.55 micrometer from the ground state and the blue band is centered at 0.42 micrometer from the ground state. The blue band is known as 4F1 band and green band is known as 4F2 band. These two bands are 1000 angstrom wide each and they have very small lifetime of the order of 10 raised to power minus 9. The lifetime of these uh, two bands that is green band and blue band is less than or equal to 10 raised to power minus 9 seconds which is very small. Now the pumping used in ruby laser is the optical pumping. So we can say that uh, chromium ions get excited to these levels by absorbing energy from the xenon flash lamp and there is a fast non-radioactive decay from these bands to 2E state. Now this 2E state is a metastable state which has, uh, which has lifetime of 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3 second which is very high. So we can say that this 2E level is the metastable level and this metastable level is splitted into two further levels that is 2A bar and E bar and the separation between the, uh, these two sub levels is 29 centimeter inverse. So we can say that the separation between uh, this 2A bar, this 2A and E level, this is the sub level of 2E uh, metastable state so we can say that the separation between these two sub levels is 29 centimeter inverse now the population inversion is created between these two levels and when the atoms are decayed to ground state we get doublet r1 and r2 r1 has a wavelength of 6943 that is 6943 angstrom and R2 has a wavelength of 6928 angstrom. But the laser action takes place 
only at R1 line, that is between E bar and ground level, that is between E bar and 4 A2 level, where 4 A2 is the ground state level. So we can say that the laser action takes place uh, only at R1 line, that is between E bar and 4 A2 level. Now, the laser action takes place only at R1 level because the R1 level attains uh, the, the R1 line attains threshold before R2 line because of higher inversion. There is higher inversion inversion at E level, so uh, the R1 line attains threshold before R2 level. So we can say that once laser action starts in R1 line, as soon as uh, the laser action starts in R1 line, E bar level gets depleted and as soon as E bar level gets depleted, the population transfer from 2A bar level takes place at such a fast rate that the, uh, the threshold is never achieved for R2 line. So there is no laser action uh, corresponding to R2 line that is from 2A bar to 4A2 level there is no laser action. Thus uh, the laser action takes place between E bar to 4A2 level giving rise to red light of wavelength 6943 angstrom that is 6943 angstrom. Now we will look at the construction and working of the ruby laser. The ruby laser consists of a single ruby crystal in the form of a cylind uh, cylindrical rod which is about 5 cm in length and diameter is 0.5 cm with the end surfaces accurately plane and parallel. As we have already discussed that the ends of the ruby laser or we can say that the ends of the ruby rod are uh, plane and parallel. One of the end is silvered with 100% reflectivity and the other one is uh, silvered such that there is 10% transmission. Now the two ends does form a resonant cavity because one of the end is 100% reflective and the other one is 90% uh, reflective so we can say that it, the two ends form a resonant cavity. Now the ruby rod is placed inside a xenon flash lamp this the curling or the uh, helix is the fla xenon flash lamp and the ruby laser is placed between this xenon flash lamp as you can see in this diagram. This, the cylindrical tube is the ruby rod and the helical shape is that of the flash lamp. Now the flash lamp is further co uh, connected with the capacitor so that a few thousand joules of energy is discharged in a few milliseconds which will result in power output of a few megawatts from the xenon flash lamp. Now the flash lamp operates operation leads to a pulsed output of the laser. We can see that uh, this is the pulsed output which we get from the xenon flash lamp and here we have the power supply now in, in addition to these things the ruby laser requires cooling with water or forced air because a lot of pump energy is used up in heating the ruby rod now in addition to the pumping scheme which we have seen here uh, by using optical pumping we can use the pumping mechanism as shown in this figure here uh, laser rod and the flash lamp coincide with the focal lines of a cylindrical reflector as we can see here this is the ruby rod and this one is the flash lamp and the ruby uh, ruby rod and the flash lamp coincide with the focal lines of the cylindrical reflector of an elliptical cross section as you can see here this is the elliptical cross section of this cylindrical tube or we can see that cylindrical reflector and the ruby rod and the flash lamp is placed at uh, the focal lines of the cylindrical reflector. In this type of pumping, all the energy emerging from one of the foci of the elliptical reflector after reflection from the reflector surface focuses to the other focus. Uh, this is the focus, this is, the, this is one of the foci of this elliptical reflector where ruby rod is placed and at the other foci there is the flash lamp placed. Now due to this arrangement all the energy which is emerging from the flash lamp is transferred to the ruby rod which gives efficient transfer of energy and we get a, a good lasing action. Then we have another phenomenon which is spiking. 
now the flash lamp emits bright flash of light for a very f- uh, short time and the moment the flash lamp stops operating the population of the upper level depletes very fast and the laser action stops till the xenon lamp flashes again so for the moment the xenon flash lamp does not operate we do not get the laser action and during a short period of time in which ruby is lasing the emission is found to consist of spikes of high intensity as we can see in this figure so this is the uh, graph which is plotted uh, between power output and the time t and from this we can say that the laser output uh, is obtained in the form of the spikes so for the time uh, for which ruby laser is uh, in action the emission is found to consist of spikes of high intensity the intensity of these spikes is very high and this phenomenon is called spiking of laser now if we assume that the pump is suddenly switched on to a value much above the threshold the population inversion will build up and it will cross the threshold value and due to this photon build up would increase beyond the steady state value and due to this process it will deplete the upper level now because the population inversion is increased much beyond the threshold value this will definitely increase the photon number which will ultimately deplete the upper level now since the photon number is higher than the steady state value the inversion is brought below threshold because we uh, for a good laser action we need that the threshold value is maintained so to uh, maintain the threshold we bring the inversion below the threshold and again the whole cycle is repeated again now the net result is a series of bursts of laser action which is called spiking now earlier a very bright flash of light was observed when xenon flash lamp was on but as soon as the xenon flash lamp was uh, not operating we didn't get the laser action and during this short period of time in which the laser action was there we got spikes of high intensity and if the xenon flash lamp was switched on then the population inversion built up uh, so, uh, such that it crossed the threshold value and due to this photon number was increased beyond the steady state value which depleted the upper level now to maintain this uh, threshold we uh, were required to uh, bring that inversion that fo- uh, population inversion below the threshold value and uh, the whole cycle was repeated again that is inversion was built up again and due to this we got a series of bursts of laser action that is we got we got the spiking in this form now we will see the threshold power which is required in the uh, laser action so that the threshold uh, th- threshold value is maintained now in order to raise ion from level 1 to level 2 if there is a level 1 and this is the level 2 now to order to raise each ion from level 1 to level 2 we need to supply at least an amount of energy which is h cut omega p and this h, uh, this omega p is the average pump frequency now to maintain n2 atoms in the upper level if we say that we have to maintain n2 levels in this upper level minimum power required will be n2 into h cut omega upon t that is energy upon time is the power required so uh, to maintain n2 number of atoms in the upper level we we will say that n2 into energy upon time so minimum power needed so that n2 number of atoms are maintained at the upper level it is equal to n2 h cut omega upon t spontaneous where t is a spontaneous time and at threshold we know that n2 will be equal to n by 2 there will be half of the uh, half the number of atoms at uh, the level n uh, at the level 2 and we can say that threshold power per unit volume needed to maintain population uh n by 2 at the upper level will be p threshold equal to n by 2 h cut omega upon t spontaneous now if we put all the numerical values in this formula that is if we put nu p that is fre- pump frequency equal to 6.25 into 10 raise to 14 hertz and uh, n equal to 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 34 per meter cube then we will get the value p threshold equal to 1100 watt per meter and if we consider that the efficiency of the pump source is 25% and further if we assume that 25% is absorbed in pa- passage through ruby rod then the electrical threshold power comes out to be 18 kilowatt per centimeter cube which was which was very consistent with the experimental result 
सो दिस वॉज ऑल विच वी नीडेड टू स्टडी अबाउट द रूबी लेजर आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड एवरी कॉन्सेप्ट इफ यू स्टिल हैव एनी डाउट यू मे कमेंट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स एंड प्लीज़ लाइक द वीडियो शेयर इट एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल थैंक यू